let's do it. All right. Well, let's get started, everyone. Hello and welcome to the Ultimate Nurses Month celebration. Nurses Rise with our host, myself, Dina Redinger, and my esteemed co-host, Sharon Weinstein. We are authors of the book, Think Differently, 18 Strategies to Fix Broken Thinking, and co-host of the five-month Nurse Leader Listening Tour. And boy, do we not learn a lot then. During the tour, we interviewed over 30 nurses from across the country and around the globe. We asked the difficult questions and invited our guests to share their stories. We gave them a voice. They gleaned so many golden nuggets from those sessions. We decided to offer this four-week Nurses Month celebration of you. In our studies of those in leadership positions, we have found that success happens when we ask the right questions and we solve the right problem. That's what we've done, and we will do this throughout Nurses Month, resulting in value add for each of you. And we invite you to engage with your peers and us during this four-week running as we address these issues identified by the ANA as key to our future, self-care, recognition, professional development, and community engagement. Our respective healthcare and writing careers make us uniquely qualified for this role as facilitators today. Before we start, we want to acknowledge you. We want to thank you for joining us today. And we've got viewers from all over the globe. So please use the chat. Let us know where you're from. And if you are willing, seeing us on replay, you can still comment and we will respond. And now I'd like to hand it over to my great co-host, Sharon Weinstein, to really introduce two of our amazing guests today for you to talk about self-care. I am really thrilled to join you. Self-care is our topic for today, May 5th, and it's the start of Nurses Week. And our guests for, for today are Bonnie Barnes, who I hope will be joining us. You know her as co-founder of the Daisy Foundation, along with her husband, Mark. Claire Biedenharn, who brings over two decades of chaplaincy experience in industry, critical care, and organ donation. As an author, teacher, and speaker, she seeks to guide stressed healthcare providers, does that sound like any of you, toward a restored relationship with their profession. Currently, she leads a pilot program with Health Carousel that provides listening services to travel nurses. And we'll be hearing more about that. And then Annette Montalvo, a true visionary. As a coach and a mentor, she supports nurses and other professionals, healthcare and non-healthcare, in their personal and professional vision and lives with life planning, leadership development, and innovation goals through workshops, seminars, and coaching. We are so pleased to recognize and celebrate the extraordinary work of nurses in healthcare systems nationwide. If healthcare is to work, it takes nurses. And we realize and appreciate that you really do make a difference. Following the ANA four-week model, we are pleased to welcome you to self-care. Each nurse who participates today and for whom we have an email address will receive a PDF copy of the award-winning book, Be Is For Balance, second edition, and ANA first place winner in consumer health. Throughout the series, we'll be welcoming panelists to augment content and drive takeaways. And we begin today with self-care and today's panel of experts. Dina, over to you. Yeah, and we're gonna jump right on in here. You know, we all have so many things that we have responsibilities for, for all of ourselves. And whether you're caring for children, elderly parents are pursuing those personal interests, activities, or hobbies, some of us are in the sandwich generation, such as myself, um, taking care of parents and children and also grandkids. You know, I'd love to just throw this out to you, Antoinette, as we get started. You know, how do you, how do you manage all of these multiple aspects and, and with the focus of this self-care? Because I know I lose myself all the time. I'm terrible at it sometimes. So tell me, mm -hmm. tell me what we could learn from you about how to do that. Absolutely. And thank you again, Sharon and Dina, for having me on um, this panel, and it's just great to kind of start off uh, just this conversation because I think that sets the the tone mm -hmm. for how we approach Nurses Week and what we think about. But just thinking about that question specifically, I think the biggest piece is having grace with yourself, 
recognizing that you're not necessarily going to do everything perfectly. And I think um, being uh, graceful with yourself in the in the pursuit of balance and the pursuit of integration um, with the multiple tasks that you have, I think it's being um, just graceful with yourself. And then also just recognizing your breaking point. Something that I like to always highlight in uh, a visionary leadership and resilience e-course that I have is, is being self-aware, being self-aware of where you feel like you've stretched too much um, because that gives you the permission to know when you need additional help, when you need to set boundaries, when you need to set parameters, and even when you just need to pause and take a minute for yourself. Um, I think the the great piece of life is that it, it's it's a journey. It's a pursuit. Um, it's not always a sprint. There are moments that you have to sprint. There may be moments where there might be a lot of things that are happening all at once, um, but giving yourself the permission again to create that balance as you move along is just very helpful in setting that foundation. So I think um, just really assessing yourself, you know, again, as nurses, we are great at assessing others, but even just being being aware of ourselves and saying, you know what? Is this stressing me? Do I absolutely need to do whatever this thing is? Is this something that is going to, you know, change the trajectory of what I'm doing? Or could I just wait on it? And then just recognize that, you know, timelines can be fluid and then balancing it in that way. And that, you know, you know, whatever that priority is, if you can give your all to that priority thing, then it helps you feel like you fulfill what you need to do. So that's a little bit of a springboard in, term, in terms of the, the jump point. And obviously there's a lot of different concepts, but just recognizing that balance um, pacing yourself, being aware of your own self and your own breaking points, and then just having grace with yourself. Okay, let's turn it over to you, Claire. Well, uh, awareness is what really jumped out at me, Antoinette. You really covered that beautifully because I think that we get so wrapped up in all of the ways that are we're linked to other people and we just forget about ourselves and i've found that in working with nurses and uh and, and in other situations the hardest part is just to remember to do something other than what you just normally do i mean that is a challenge so i think that even if maybe you throughout the day if you even said to yourself like every time i pour a cup of coffee i want to make myself just pause and ref you know and and ground myself for just a minute or uh, every time um, you use the hand sanitizer pause reflect and, and a lot of times you don't even have to have time to reflect but if you can just pause and take a breath mm -hmm. give yourself a chance to look at the situation a little differently it's right? that ultimate reset button isn't it yes, yes. it yes. really is yes and breathe breathe yes. take a deep breath and breathe you know i've opened it up for everyone to speak i would love to hear from all of you in terms of how you feel about that particular question this program is for you it's not for us we're only facilitating chris chris marie is that hello, how hello everyone <laughs> hello good morning to everyone um, it's nice to be with you. I think um, uh, I agree with everything that our um, speakers have said. Uh, the thing, one of the, since my niche specialty is in the area of employee scheduling and staffing, I find that um, uh, managers and um, nurses who are engaged in that activity especially need to have um, some exercises that they can do for calming moments um and to find the levity um and to remember it will come to pass um and it's not here to stay even though it's back in a month um because that process of doing the schedules and doing the daily staffing is really wearing on everybody i would think it would be a nightmare i cannot even imagine mm -hmm. um it actually is pretty simple if um there's um, rules around the construction of it and best practices. And if you um, know what those are, there's tricks that can get it down. Uh, on average for um, a department of 60 employees, you should be able to produce a four to six week schedule in less than four hours. But it really depends on um, the process that you have established with it. Um, sometimes when everything is 
open for open requesting, um, especially if the rules of engagement for um, peer review and um, uh, collegial um, scheduling mm -hmm. and staffing um, are, are not well defined or ignored by a select group of folks, it can make it very challenging to everyone else. Wow. Sharon, did you want to chime in? I thought you wanted to say something, Sharon Herbert. Yes, this is Sharon. And thank you so much for this day. We so enjoy actual opportunities mm -hmm. to speak about nursing. Lots of people just do acts and tasks without even preparation. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of self care. We've already prepared for everyone else. We need to prepare ourselves every day before even getting in touch or, you know, talking to others. I do self preparation and I chose to teach that to my clients in preparation for your days. I set my clock. 15 minutes before the required time and take time with myself and a higher power to positively prepare for the day's whatevers so that I can have a fresh focus when I encounter whatever it is. If the plan goes the way it should, that's great, but we'll prepare every day for a good day. It's like being on an airplane. You, what's the safety message? you put on your oxygen mask first. So care for yourself first, and then be prepared to for whatever encounters are of the day, but you can make your own space more positive. That will help other people as well that you encounter. Powerful, powerful. Wow, that was great. I think I saw Benjamin. Benjamin, were you trying to put up your hand? It looked like you had the little hand logo thing come up. Would you like to share? Um, uh, I think he's also trying to get Dan to speak up. Oh. Isn't that right, Benjamin? Yeah. Let's hear from you, Benjamin. Um, it's it's funny because uh, in all my inter, uh, my mentorship experiences, because really I highly regard my mentors when it comes to this issue, mm -hmm. because I am on my thirties, uh, early thirties, and going to mid thirties, and sometimes you tend to to do a lot of things, and sometimes you tend to forget yourself. And during those times and moments that um, that you have been uh, stressed or probably uh, um, not having that time to even think of yourself, the one of the most important lessons that uh, I I learned from really from the people who are also giving advices and also mentorship. Um, it's funny because really one of, one of my mentors told me like, Benjamin, you have to remember what you are thinking right now might not even matter in the next few years. Mm -hmm. No, really, like, um, it's like what's, what my mentor is telling me is that the importance of really prioritizing and valuing the, the, the things that really matter in, in our lives not only as nurses, but also as human beings or as a person. And it's very important to, as I mentioned, prioritizing yourself. You must believe also that you are worth it. It's very important for you to always self-affirm and also to um, believe that you deserve the gift of joy. So because when you put yourself first, you are not only ensuring that you are the best of you as possible. And I believe in the quotation, that you cannot pour from an empty cup. It's very important for you to always refill, re-energize, reinvigorate, reinvigorate yourself. You have more energy and joy to give other, uh, to give in uh, in other areas of, of your life, and also at the same time creating a cycle of happiness and fulfillment that builds uh, upon itself. You're right, Ben. And self care is not selfish. I'd love to open it up to Dan. Dan, would you please mention the initiative that I added to the chat? Let's hear about that. Sure, can you hear me? Absolutely. 
Oh, so I have the good fortune to be on the National Advisory Council of this R3 renewal from Cinda Rushton and the folks at John Hopkins. And uh, they have developed all of these great modules that talk about self-care and resilience and renewal. And um, so they're open to every nurse. They're, they're free. You just sign up and go to the website. And uh, I'll put in um, a another link to a podcast that uh, was just released yesterday, uh, podcast number two, which is about uh, what's on your plate <laughs> and a great oh. little exercise, mostly for nursing students to kind of figure out what is on their plate, where are they spending their time and what is most important in that regard. And so, um, uh, I renewal. love the title. It kind of sounds like what's in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, <isn't it? laughs> what's on your plate. So that, that'll be my next little link in the, in the chat. So Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you for sharing. And yeah. always good to see you and hear you. Thank powerful. you. Yes, very powerful. You know, Benjamin, I want to kind of circle back. And I think it all goes aligned with everybody here today is the fact that, you know what, we are worthy, you know, and how yeah. important it is just acknowledging the fact that you are worthy. So I just wanted to say thank you for those words. I appreciate that. And thank you, Daniel. What a great resource. Yeah, that, that was amazing. We have another question that we'd really love to have you address. And it's about speaking up and standing your ground. Sometimes we feel as if we as nurses do not have a voice. We're not being heard. What do we need to do to be heard? For a wide variety of reasons, we're hesitant to stand our ground when it comes time to respecting work-life balance. So it's great to say, I'm going to do something for myself, but the pandemic, let's face it, has played a key role in this case. Our time is no longer our own. It is everyone's. And when we multitask and assume roles that seem insurmountable, given the number of hours in a day, performance and mindset suffer. What tip will you offer our viewers today? I'd love everyone to chime in. Please yeah. let us know. Raise your hand. Okay. Dina will call on you. Let's get this conversation going. And if I don't see the hands, I can just call on you. Go ahead, Antoinette. You want to start? Yeah, you'll yeah, be no, volunteered. Just, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll just call I'll, on you. I'll, I'll accept the volunteer. I'll raise my hand for it. But, <laughs> okay, go for um, it, Antoinette. I mean, I think a lot of it, you know, uh, plays into what Benjamin said. It's just uh, being, you know, recognizing that you are worthy to share your voice. Um, I think a lot of times when you are aware of a pain point. Um, it's very easy to want someone else to fix it, but oftentimes the thing that creates the most friction or irritation in yourself is the thing that you're best equipped for. Um, so I think it's recognizing that your your ideas, your insight, your vision, your goals, whatever that is, um, is worthy of the insight for um, improving something else. Um, everyone, I, I believe, is created with a unique opportunity to impact anything that they do, whatever sphere of influence that they're in. And this is something that I mentioned in a little bit um, in our chat yesterday, um, just recognizing that, for example, in nursing, uh, if you recognize that you are an advocate for your patient, um, including yourself in that task list of advocacy is important. And if it involves speaking up, if it involves sharing your insight or your idea, mm -hmm. that is ultimately going to deliver better care that is needed. Um, and a lot of times you're not able to see if change is going to happen unless you, you share that change. So I think um, being open to understanding that your unique stance does play an impact and can provide an impact on whatever it is that you're doing um, because you, you don't make change if you keep silent. Obviously, there's always tactful ways to do it. There's respectful ways. There's ways to create um, something that's going to be presentable for someone so that they can uh, handle what's being said before it gets to a point where it feels explosive or you feel mm -hmm. like I've been trying to say this all along. So I think um, <laughs> learning to say it sooner rather than later prevents these major issues. Again, in the same way of nursing where we put certain parameters in place, that's why there's call bells, that's why there's handrails, that's why there's infection protocols, that's why there's hand washing um, protocols. Those things are put in place so you don't get to an explosive issue or an issue that can create much more harm than it needs to be later. So the sooner that you're able to address those things when they you know, are kind of smaller before they build into something bigger. Right, before they um, escalate. They have, there you go, before they Before escalate. they become a cancer with meds. There you go. So before it becomes too elevated to an uh, emergency status, again, right. it's that prevention piece, that proactive piece. So recognizing that your voice um, is a part of that advocacy. It's a part of that change. It's a part of whatever influence is to be. So I think that's always reframing that perspective so that you make the impact that you know you can make, even if it feels you know a little bit uncomfortable at times. 
there's some things that you said were very, very powerful. And I want to capture it because truly it is, there, there is a fear of people speaking up for fear of being judged, mm -hmm. fear of not being heard, um, waiting for somebody to fix it. And you have to know specifically what it is or it won't happen. Right. And so it is that reframing. So I want to really, you know, thank you for sharing that. And so once again, for those who have just joined, welcome, we're talking about how do you step in asking for the things that you want and you need and then how do you proceed forward? So we're going to be sharing everybody's tips on how do you step into that place when you're like, you really need something, but yet there's something you holding you back. What is going to help you move forward? Internet shared some great tips. So thank you. I think Claire, you are raising your hand as well. I did. Think. <laughs> yes. I was just going to say too, if you play off of that wanting to take care of people as nurses do, I think that another thing is to consider if if you don't speak up, who will? And also, if you don't speak up, what are you modeling? Especially if you are a nurse leader, uh, it's up to you to show, give people permission to speak up by speaking up yourself first. I love that. I love that. Um, let's go around the horn. So Benjamin, do you have a tip real fast that you can share about um, how to create that place where you feel like you're being heard? And I think Benjamin wants us to have more than 24 hours in a day. There is no such thing. So go ahead, <laughs> Benjamin. Uh, do you want me to answer the, the last question? Me? Uh, can you? Yeah. Ms. Dina, can you again repeat the Oh, the sure. Question? So we were talking about how do you step in and getting past the fear of um fear of speaking up. You know, a lot of people are withholding a little bit. We gotta want to step up, you want to stand your ground. How do you do that in a workplace for yourself? How do you do that with some tips? Uh, honestly speaking, when it comes to in a workplace, different human beings have different levels of self-awareness and also levels of authenticity. And as you mentioned a while ago, people are afraid to speak because they are afraid of being judged. Mm -hmm. So uh, in my in my uh, case, like with what I do with my work, I always try my best to practice gratitude. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like that when it comes to this concept and principle of self-care, Although it is a journey for a person to arrive at that particular moment where you will feel that power of gratitude. But in my case, it is because of the leaders and also the nurses who poured that kindness and gratitude uh, towards me as a young nurse and a young professional mm -hmm. that turned out turned out to be a driving force for me to pay, pay it forward. So that's also the reason why I speak out for others, because of the uh, those people around me who also uh, poured that uh, gratitude. And I feel like that's very important in terms of healthcare as well. I don't know if I answered the, the, the question clearly. <laughs> no, I think you did a great job. You know, essentially, we are in charge of creating a psychological safety zone for everybody to share. Share with each other. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, Chris, would you like to share a quick tip? I'll come back to you. Oh, there she is. Sorry about that. I just had to get to the unmute button. Um, I, I concur with everything that's been said. I think just remembering our own humanity. And when you're faced with those really, you know, tough decisions um, throughout the day, uh, remember to take time for yourself and you're making your decisions in the best way possible. And I would encourage all of you to use the chat. It is enabled for you to converse with others who are on the call. Mm -hmm. And you'll get a copy of that when you get the recording as well. Absolutely. Daniel, I know you've shared a couple things. What, what would be a tip that you'd like to share? Well, um, I like this guy, Lance Secretin. He's a great uh, leadership uh, guru, scholar. And uh, he talks about uh, Spark Flame Torch as a book. And uh, he also says it's really clear, it's important for somebody to have a why be do statement. Why are you here? Who will you be? And what will you do? 
And I think it's easy to speak up if you are clear about what your destiny is and what your why be do statement is. Um, and um, I'll put a, another little link. He's got a workbook that uh, might be of interest to people and I'll put that in the, um, I put that in the question and answer. That'd be great. I love that. Why be do love that. Hey, Heather, tell us what you think. Heather, can you come off mute? Uh, Heather, I'll come back to you. Sharon Herbert. She's stepping out. She has a client engagement in a minute, but I'd love okay. to hear from Haiti okay. because she enrolled recently in our, the communication section, mm -hmm. series one of our learning center. And it's all about speaking up and speaking out. Haiti, can you join us? Hi, Aloha, everyone. Hello. I, yeah, I'm so happy and so thankful for this opportunity here uh, to be learning from all of you. Yeah, thank you again, Sharon, for inviting me. Sometimes it's really the self-confidence, yeah. Sometimes, especially for us, it's the language barrier. Sometimes maybe speaking up in a meeting like that, sometimes we are thinking to this, oh, what will they say? Will I be uh, using the right words? And sometimes we, we think that maybe it will not matter. Sometimes we think, oh, it's better that maybe we're gonna be silent rather than speaking up. And, but the fact that you are there, yeah. the fact that you are there in the room, the fact that you are in that position, meaning to say, you deserve to be heard. You deserve to speak up what is in your mind. So just really try to develop that self-confidence in you that you really to that you really deserve to be heard. I love it. That you really matter. Thank you. That's amazing. Hi, Grace. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us what you think. Grace, are you with us? Can you come off mute? Grace, we'll come back to you too. Hi, Beth. Welcome, Beth. I think Beth, I don't know if she's still with us. So um, I think we've got some really great points here. Um, I'd like to, if anybody has not been called on, Susan, um, I don't think I've called on you. What are your thoughts? I just invited her to unmute. Everyone is open to speak. This yeah. is your call. It's your conversation. Certainly, we're very interested in the concept of self-care and balance, but it's you from whom we really want to hear. And when we broadcast this recording, it's from you that everyone else wants to hear. So please, please do join us. Yeah, let me just do a recap as I went through some of the things that people were sharing, and maybe this might trigger, trigger something from you. Here's a couple things that we heard. One, you've got to believe that you're worthy, that your words matter. That is so vitally important. Um, you know, Claire talked a little bit about grace, and I want to come back to that because that was a question that kind of triggered me early. So, so Claire, how do we create grace for ourselves so that we find ourselves welcome, Bonnie, that we're more confident in being able to speak up? How do we create grace for ourselves? I think that um, first step is allowing space. So many times, as we've been talking about, we're we're busy, 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 everything, the focus is on everybody else. But I think as, as has been mentioned, the idea of being kind to each other or kind to ourselves first is essential. Mm -hmm. There's work that's got to be done. And um, I think too, that one thing that's important that I just want to throw out is that as we are looking to find the grace for ourselves, accept ourselves. I think it's really important to acknowledge the role of grief in our lives and grief in our situation following um, the pandemic. Uh, I think that there are um, things that we've said or done that we don't, uh, that, that we feel bad about. And one thing that we can do by creating grace is this little, it's a wonderful, um, thing to do where you write out the story that you've never told anybody anything oh. a story that may bring you shame 
And by writing it out, and pro it's a way to process it, then you either burn it or shred it, you let it go. Mm, that's powerful. And it is incredible. I've used it. Oh, not that is powerful. Even. And we were, I, I suggested burning because I love the idea of the, uh, you know, the smoke floating up, but the group said they couldn't use fire, you know, in the facility. So they shredded it. And it was so satisfying to hear that noise and I watch it. it get torn. Listen, it brings us back a long way, but we used to walk around a hospital with wood floors with Florence uh -huh. Nightingale lamps and lit candles. Wow. Yes. Who knows? Bonnie That's Barnes is with us now. Good. Bonnie, would you like to speak yeah. up? Welcome. Welcome, Bonnie. Thank you. I'm so worried that I'm late. It's I okay. We, we know that you were traveling. We right. know that you were with at AONL with a lot of our colleagues and kudos to you. Well, thank you so much. It's a, always a pleasure to be with, with you, Sharon and Dana. And I, I love this topic about, you know, what can we do to ensure that nurses have a way to refill their cups? And thank you for what I was just hearing, Clara. Um, you know, what we think here at DAISY is that um, reminding yourselves why you became nurses is really critically important. That we know recharges nurses and gets through the noise of everything that's going on from day to day and documentation and all of the staffing challenges and everything else. But when you sit back and remind yourself and think about your purpose and why you do what you do every day. And that's what makes our, our DAISY Award nomination so powerful because those are stories of feedback from patients and families who describe in great detail the difference you make. And, and that appears to have a real impact on nurses and their ability to get up every day and do this very hard, challenging work each day. So the question I have for you, Bonnie, we were talking a little bit about this before you came on. You know, when somebody gets a DAISY award, I'd like for you to kind of think about those women who have gotten this, these nurses that have gotten this award, and talk a little bit about what are some of the key things, attributes, being able to speak up, stand your ground, and how do they do that where they can be heard? Oh, great question. Well, number one, I think they have leadership support. I think that they are in an environment, a healthy work environment where their leaders are giving them that opportunity to be able to speak their grounds and support them. And there's nothing more important than leadership in, in creating that environment. So I would say that's the number one thing. Yeah. The second is. thing is that there's so no- They know they have a voice, right? They do. They know they are being heard. And they know that there's no retribution for them speaking their voice. In yeah. fact, they're listened to and, you know, we say here at DAISY in our own little world of our, of our organization, you know, we, we hear you, we listen to you. It doesn't mean we always agree with you with our team or it doesn't mean that we're going to act on your suggestion, but you always have a voice and we want to hear what you think. And I think that's um, an important leadership attribute. Yeah. And mean it. I've Absolutely. seen other people who have asked that and really didn't mean it, <laughs> you know. Well, you can see it and you can see it in the follow through. Right. Again, right. there's no retribution. There's. There's thoughtful, thoughtful dialogue. Yes. And I think, too, that an important part of that is that, again, that in that safe space is that the, the leaders are willing to be vulnerable. And uh, with the group I worked with, it was like we were, it was solid. I mean, it was frozen until the leadership shared their story about what had happened during the lockdown. And once the once that was like, okay, it's this is a safe place to speak, then everybody else spoke up. And it was really pretty powerful. Yeah. I'm smiling. And, and, may, I, may I just comment on that? Please I'm, do. I'm smiling at you because I just sat through a wonderful presentation, a, a panel discussion at the AONL conference. Um, that talked about what happens when, and this was really about DEI, but it talks about what happens when leaders show their own, their own sides, their own vulnerability, their own experience, mm -hmm. and what a difference that makes in a sense of belonging and inclusion and openness. So I mm -hmm. love so, so that. So two points there. Number one, mm -hmm. leaders are people too, and they share the same vulnerabilities that each of us share. And number two, when you talk about DEI, and I am so glad that you added belonging, because that's the B that I always add. What good is it if you have D, E, and I without someone recognizing that they do belong? 
We all belong. We belong. I want to I want to ask you a question, Bonnie. What do you think about this sentence? Give them a voice or watch them leave. Uh -huh. That's a good. One. I think it's a pretty strong. <laughs> Give them statement a voice or watch them leave. Yeah, I, I think it's a pretty strong statement about what's going on right now, as we look at the environments where nurses are running. But we at Daisy are focusing on why they stay. In fact, we're doing. I love it. We're doing a conference next month. Uh, our International Daisy Day theme is why nurses stay. And when you look at all the components of why they stay, absolutely, voices. Voice is critically important and teamwork and the staying for their team, staying for their leaders, and of course, staying for their patients. And if they don't have a voice in how they care for their patients, which I think is the number one thing nurses care about, how do I care for my patients? If you don't give me everything I need to be able to take care of my patients the way I know I must, then I got to go find a place that will. Yeah. Wow. And they will. Why they stay. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Yeah, yeah we did a, a breakfast at the AONL conference with a marvelous um, nurse leader, a manager who received the Daisy Nurse Leader Award, and she did a, a beautiful conversation on, uh, um, and her team did, on why they stay and the attributes of her leadership that make her stay. And certainly uh, their ability to voice them, have a voice is a key. Part and I love now that rather than only the staff nurses, those awards are being given and recognition is being given oh, yeah. to the leaders, to faculty, to others. We're yeah. all in this together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wherever nurses work, wherever you are in your careers, meaningful recognition is has got to be part and part of part and parcel of your world. Yes, which is our topic actually for the 12th. So I hope that you'll be back to join us <laughs> because that is a very hot topic. We don't often yes. give nurses the recognition that they need. And I know I would love to, as well as everyone else, learn more about why nurses stay. Mm -hmm. well, our, our conference in England is being recorded. And by the end of June, it should be online for anyone to watch. That'll be great. That, okay. I love that. And I think to the, the question of the uh, second victim syndrome is... A part of this piece. And that's, you know, people who have been healthcare providers who have been uh, a part of a, a sentinel incident. Uh, anytime a, a patient has been harmed and the person's responsible, personally responsible, they say that they respond, they either quit healthcare altogether, they just soldier on or else they use it as a springboard to another facet of nursing. And if they're, uh, my heart goes out to the first two categories, but, and I think that we have remarkable opportunities with that last one. How can we help recalibrate the nursing practice for that individual? Yeah, and how do we keep them from that quiet quitting? We don't want that That's, to happen. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I'd like to see if Grace, can you come off mute by chance? If you can hear us. I've asked her a couple of times to unmute. How about Olga? Olga? Yes. We'd love to hear your thoughts about some of the things that we've been sharing, you know, how to have a voice. And, you know, another question, why do you stay? Well, one reason to use it is because the life is so short. We have to use every opportunity that we meet, whether it's a nurse or a patient, to teach each other not to be afraid to make mistakes. I am a Daisy Award recipient. And, uh, oh, yes. congratulations. Wow. Was, We'd love to was, see your face if you want to share it. Yeah. But we applaud you. Thank yes. you. Congratulations, Olga. I was just a fresh out of school. This is my third profession. And this was very encouraging when I was presented with that award. My patient chose me for my compassion. Mm. It was just so uplifting. Being in a new environment, I'm from Russia and uh, coming to Oklahoma, uh, culturally shocked. There is not many people around me like me. And receiving that award was very, very encouraging. Mm. That just and, gives and, me chills, Olga. Go ahead. <gasps> Olga, where in Russia are you from? I'm from Vladimir, Central Russia. Okay. And how long have you been here? Because your English is wonderful. Oh, thank you. I learned my language, uh, my English in Ghana. My husband is a Ghanaian. So he came to pick me up from Russia, take me across the ocean. 
to start a new life. I learned French all my life, so I had to learn how to speak English. And after he got a scholarship to go to Syracuse University, we moved nine years later, lived in Syracuse for four years. And then he got a job to teach in um, university and we moved to Oklahoma. It, we have been here for 15 years. That's amazing. Oh, That's Olga, wonderful, but what a difference. <laughs> Even Syracuse to Oklahoma is a difference. Exactly. <laughs> Huge. I, I just pulled up Olga's page on our website with, and the headline is, our patients comment on her caring attitude, her responsiveness to their needs, and the kindness she showed them. Mm, you are love a that. amazing nurse, Olga. That's beautiful. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Olga. We're honored. Thank you so much. That's so Thank close. you. And are we ever lucky in our country to have you among us? Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. wonderful. Well said, Sharon. We have everyone. Yeah, here. Is this... you like... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sharon. This is Grace. It's Grace. Oh, Grace, Grace. Oh, Grace, Grace is alive and well. Without you, Grace. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we've, been, we've been trying to get you. Tell us what your thoughts are. We are just, we've got a beautiful face. We want to hear your words. We want to hear what you think. So, you know, the interesting thing is, I when I heard Grace the first time, I didn't even know I was the one you were referring to. Um, I work, I'm a physician by trade. And I've always told my colleagues that the best allies you could have are the nurses. And celebrating nurses has always been a joy. And that's because I listened to my professor in medical school who told me that, or who told us then that the best way you can actually succeed in your medical profession is to have the nurses as your friends. Mm -hmm. And many of my colleagues didn't listen, but I took that to heart because I saw the difference between those who did and those who didn't for those who had gone ahead of me. So I have a whole lot of nurse friends. And right now, even as the founder of a nonprofit that does health outreaches, most of my medical team comprise of nurses. I've been a leader, I've been a patient experience leader in a 500 production company and I was over nurses. We had to do the one-on-one. -on -one. But one, one thing that stood out to me when I had to do one-on-ones with nurses on the floor every month was the fact that once you give them the opportunity to be heard, they can transform your bottom line. Mm. As long as you give them back, you give them a feedback or feed forward, whichever one we want to go with. But don't just say, I'm having a meeting with you. I'm asking you because I go beyond just asking, what do you need to succeed? I want to know you personally. I want to know you beyond the four walls of the hospital because whatever is happening out there is impacting you in-house. When I'm writing the thank you notes to you, when I'm writing a thank you note to mail to you, I'm not writing it to just you. I'm writing it to you and your family because mm -hmm. if they didn't support you, yep. you won't be here mm -hmm. and you won't be giving me your best. So as a nurse leader or someone who has been over nurses, one thing I know is give, aside giving them those tools and allowing them to be heard, you have to actually make them see that their voice is heard because then I know on the floors, I, that was one of even the projects I piloted then was putting, having the, oh, what do we call it then? Stoplight boards, where you have the green, yellow, and white, and you have the magnetic right. things that the nurses get to write what they want. And, but the beauty of it is actually see it move from red to green. If mm -hmm. you just have the boards and there's nothing changing, they are, they are not seeing the impact they are making, over time, they just go mute. Mm -hmm. So for you I, I like that, Grace. I that. also, I especially like that you recognize who your partners are <laughs> and the value of those partners in care delivery and in outcomes, because that's really oh, what it's I, all about. I've, yes. I've lived, it's a lived, lived experience. So I can, I can speak to that any day because even in practice, my, my practice was less stressful when we have our physician meetings 
I was like, well, I don't go through all the hassles you all are going through because I have a good relationship with my partner. That's so great. That's what it is. Well, that, I appreciate that, you for giving me the opportunity to share though. <laughs> well, we don't often hear that from the medical side. So we're really thrilled to have you speak up, talk about speaking up and speaking out. So appreciated. There's mm -hmm. a comment in the chat from Dan where he's acknowledging Antoinette, the visionary nurse. Dan, why don't you tell us why you called her out and what else we should know? Well, I just really admire the work that she's doing in terms of her podcasts and her coaching and um, her consulting in terms of community health. And um, I just think people could benefit from uh, listening to some of the things that she shares and in, in the work that she's doing. So I wanted to thank her for that. Oh, thank you for that. And then Antoinette, I can tell them, but it's better if you tell them. Why don't you tell them how to get a hold of you or how to visit your website? Love that. Absolutely. And, and thank you, Dan, so much for even just being so generous. Um, I mean, I think if, in general, that's a mark of a good leader, making space for other people and, and making sure people are heard just exactly like heard from Greece. It's just taking those big or small steps um, is incredible. So I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, to, to get in touch with me, you can go to my website at visionarynurse.com. Um, you can also check out the Visionary Nurse podcast. And a lot of it, again, is looking to spark and inspire the vision in others so that they can lead in the way that they desire to lead and be an impact for someone else. We know that we each will influence people in different areas. And so if mm -hmm. you recognize that your purpose, your vision, who you are, um, is able to change the trajectory of someone else's life, the value that it holds, um, then you realize that what you are doing is just as important. So I'm just, I'm just in awe and hearing just so many different words of encouragement and positivity through each person, because I think number one, that marks that you have an understanding of your own visionary leadership, but also too, that you know how to make space so that other people's voices can be heard. So um, that's always such a, an exciting thing. It's, it's exciting to hear and to know that there are people who really truly desire to live authentic lives that will influence other people. I think there's something that ties us all together and I'm just gonna say it for what it is. And that is, you know, we truly do care about other people. And when we come together, there is power in people coming together. So I just wanna say thank you to all of you for all the work that you do. Nursing, leadership, sharing great ideas. It's so powerful. So I just wanna say thank you for that because it's, it's, it's the only way we can move through life. We cannot do life alone. Yeah. We weren't meant to do life alone. So let me just and, say that. And if I could add to that, certainly the opportunity to acknowledge and respect each other. Yes. To understand yes. that each of us has a voice and a voice to share and a message to be heard. And that because we're all in this together, the ability, like Dan did, to recognize one of his peers yes. is wonderful. Like Bonnie did, to call out Olga and then to look her up on the site to see who she is and where she's from. These are the things that will make us stronger, that will make yes. us whole, Yeah. that will keep this profession where it really, really needs to be. And while we started this discussion about self-care, we hit so many different areas. Dina mm -hmm. and I are deeply saddened by the fact that we promised you a 45-minute session <laughs> so that perhaps if you were working, you could jump in at lunch or break and combine the two. We're running out of time. What do you think, Dina? Yeah, it's time for a close. So I want to let you know, I, I still want to say thank you. I know from Sharon's heart and from mine, we just absolutely value you being uh, with us on this journey. Um, next week, we'll do some recognition on May the 12th. We would love for you to join us again. Don't forget, provide me your email and that you can receive the free B is for balance. This is Sharon's second edition. So she's amazing. So we want to thank you guys for joining us today. We want to send you off and let you know that you are worthy and we all have a voice. Voice. Share that with everyone. Share that with the do. world. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you on the 12th at 1230 Eastern. Yes. Thank Thanks you. again. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day and happy Nurses Month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Um, thank thank you. you. Thanks, Grace. And uh, I really appreciate the being able to hear all this wonderful information. What a powerful group of folks. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you, Claire. Thank we enjoyed you. hearing from you. Thank you, Chris Marie. Thanks. My pleasure. I was just adding a book into the chat that I've been enjoying this week. It's called um, Leading with Questions. 
Yep. Oh. These are the greatest questions um, that okay. you can ask. And I thought people might just like it as a reference point. Um, okay. So I, I thought it would tie into everything, but thank you. You all did a wonderful job. Thanks very thank much. You. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, Chris. Is our recording stopped? I'm going to stop the recording.